The Second Servile War was an unsuccessful slave uprising against the Roman Republic on the island of Sicily. The war lasted from 104 BC until 100 BC. Chapter 1 Background The consul Gaius Marius was recruiting soldiers for a war against the Cimbri and Teutonese in the north. He requested support from King Nicomedes III of Bithynia near the Roman province of Asia, and was refused on the grounds that every able bodied man in Bithynia had been enslaved by Roman tax gatherers for being unable to pay their dues. The Senate replied by issuing orders that no slaves were to be taken from among allies of Rome, and that all such slaves should be immediately freed. The proprietor Publius Licinius Nerva, in obedience to the edict, at once freed around 800 slaves in his province of Sicily, aside from awakening discontent among slaves from other nationalities who were not freed. This had the effect of alienating the rich Sicilian plantation owners who saw their human chattel unceremoniously being taken out of their hands. Alarmed, Nerva revoked the sentence of manumission, which provoked the slave population into revolt. Chapter 2 Solvius Tryphon Nerva failed to react decisively, by false promises he was able to return one body of the rebels to slavery, while neglecting to address a more serious outbreak near Heraclea. Eventually, Nerva dispatched a detachment of 600 soldiers to take care of the rebels near Heraclea but they were beaten and slaughtered, the slaves now gained confidence, having won a large supply of armaments and a strong leader, a former slave called Solvius. Taking the previous slave leader Eunice for his example, who had proclaimed himself an Antiochus of the Seleucid line, he assumed the name Tryphon, from Diodotus Tryphon, a Seleucid ruler. After his victory, Solvius besieged the city of Morgantia. Nerva now marched against him with Sicily's militia, but he was also defeated. The slaves then managed to take the city. After Morgantia, Solvius' slave army swelled to 2,000 horsemen and 20,000 foot. Meanwhile, another revolt had broken out in western Sicily, their Athenian, a Cilician slave with a career analogous to Cleon's, rose in revolt. He marched his slave army to join with Solvius upon hearing of the Morgantia victory. Chapter 3, Lucullus In 103 BC the Senate sent the praetor Lucius Licinius Lucullus, who had just put down a revolt in Campania, to quell the rebellion. Lucullus, at the head of a 17,000 strong Roman, and allied army, landed in western Sicily and marched on the rebel stronghold of Triocala. Chapter 3 Section 1 The Battle of Certhia. When Solvius Tryphon, the slave king, heard of Lucullus' arrival he wanted to hold out against the Romans inside Triocala. His general Athenian, however, persuaded him not to hide but instead face the Romans in open battle. Marching to meet Lucullus, the rebels encamped at Certhia, twelve miles distant from the Roman camp and, the next day, the two sides lined up for battle. According to Diodorus, Tryphon's host numbered around 40,000. After much skirmishing, the main battle began as the two armies closed the gap and came together. At first it seemed as if the rebels would drive the Romans back, with Athenian and his cavalry inflicting heavy losses upon Lucullus' flanks. However, just as it seemed that the slaves might be victorious, Athenian was wounded and fell from his horse. He was forced to feign death in order to save himself. The rebels, believing their general to be dead, lost heart and fled. Solvius Tryphon, seeing his army routed, turned and joined them in flight back to Triocala. Later that night, under cover of darkness, the wounded Athenian escaped the battlefield. With thousands of slaves cut down in the rout, Diodorus estimates that, as night fell, around 20,000 rebels lay dead, half of Tryphon's army. Chapter 3 Section 2 The Siege of Triocala After the battle, Lucullus slowly but surely worked his way to Triocala, restoring Roman rule while he marched. At Triocala the rebels had dug in, Lucullus started a siege while waiting for his command to be extended, but when he heard that he had been replaced he spitefully ended the siege, burned his siegeworks, camp and provisions, retreated and disbanded his army. 
Lucullus did this to render the task harder for his successor, Gaius Huelius the Augur, Lucullus intended, by ensuring the failure of his successor, to prove his own innocence from any alleged incompetence. Chapter 4 Athenian In 102 BC Athenian, who had succeeded as slave king after Solvius' death was able to take Gaius Suelius's camp, by surprise, Suelius' army was routed and dispersed, undoing all of Lucullus' previous success. Chapter 5 The Revolt Suppressed Finally, in 101 BC, the Roman consul Manius Aquilius was given the command against the insurgents in Sicily. The senior consul, Gaius Marius, donated several cohorts from his army in Gaul to Aquilius. With these and the troops he recruited, equipped and trained en route he succeeded in defeating Athenians' slave army upon arrival. He supposedly killed Athenian by his own hand. The revolt was quelled, and one thousand slaves who surrendered were sent to fight against beasts in the arena back at Rome for the amusement of the populace. To spite the Romans, they refused to fight and killed each other quietly with their swords, until the last flung himself on his own blade. It was the second of a series of three slave revolts in the Roman Republic, but fueled by the same slave abuse in Sicily and southern Italy. Chapter 6 Second Servile War in Literature F. L. Lucas's short story The Boar is set in Sicily in the aftermath of the Slave War. In Stephen Saylor's novel Arms of Nemesis the Second Slave War is mentioned in detail during a dinner party with Marcus Licinius Crassus who is about to campaign against the rebel slaves of Spartacus in the Third Slave War. In Colleen McCulloch's novel The First Man in Rome the Second Servile War is mentioned several times. It figures as the background for the storyline about Lucius Appelius Sotoninus. <laughs>